Former Springbok Rudy Fleiss Fasahi, who in his day was the biggest man to represent South Africa in international rugby, is my guest on Front Row Rugby today. Rudy, welcome. Thank you, Peter. Let's begin in 1993. Ian McIntosh is the new Springbok coach, and he's called you up to play in the first test match against France in Durban. You haven't played a test since 1984. You've been away for nine years. How exciting was that for you? It was almost like the first time, you know, um, because, you know, you, you think, uh, you know, uh, all those years, you think, oh, okay, I'm, I'm old and out, and here, here comes Mac and... Uh, you know, he believed in me. I remember, I can I only recall at that time, uh, I was coming from Bloemfontein, you know, and he said he was looking for a big boer to, 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 win him, to help him win the Curry Cup. And uh, I, 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 I still remember, uh, I was thinking, what's a big boer? But anyway, that's only a joke. And um, yeah, so... Mac always believed in me, and, I, and at that stage in '93 was the coach as well, and uh, and, uh, and he took me with with the, with a team with Francois Pinard and those guys uh, overseas to Australia. Uh, my last last uh, look in our days, we we never had uh, uh, we never toured because you know after sanction years. So we, for in, in 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 I think ten years, I only played ten games. Which was uh, there was only five caps that I played, you know. So uh, that is all we had at that time. So yeah, that was uh, it was nice, and it was all about Mac believing in me. You hadn't played a test since 1984. Was there a time when you just thought it's just not going to happen again? Well, I didn't even think about it because you know um, I, I was old and over and out. That's how I thought, you know. Uh, about it, but uh, yeah, so now I got this chance, and uh, uh, unfortunate, I broke my hand playing against Victoria uh, that uh, on that tour, and I had to come back. They, uh, you know, they asked me to stay, but I said no, I'd rather go home. You know, and and, uh, that, and when I got back here, uh, I just decided, no, you know, I I had enough. You know, uh, for playing for so long time. Uh, uh, actually, I thought the people were thinking, you know, I think I think you must retire, and um, it was, which was a good thing at that time uh, because you know there was nothing to play more for uh, than I've, 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 I've reached the the, the biggest uh, uh, sport, the biggest. Uh, uh, well, how can I put it? Uh, yeah, I couldn't go any further doing better than that. You know, played for the Springboks, played over uh, 300 uh, provincial games. So I said to myself, and I said to my wife, "Listen, that was it. That was it. It's good enough." So we went back to Nelspruit, where, where I was actually born and brought up. And uh, yeah, and then uh, uh, thought to myself that I will I will do some farming and stuff, but uh, that also didn't work out. And then you only got the one opportunity at King's Park against the French. But what was it like coming up against a formidable opponent like Olivier Rumar? You know, look, we didn't know much about those guys because we never played against them. So it was, it was, a, it was a, a big moment. But uh, before that test, um, Natal played a few games and, and Mac asked me, Do you, don't you want to play? Because it took like three or four weeks before we played in that test. And... Um, I said no. I I I, I want to, to rest and uh, go, we'll go into this game. Then I'm fresh. But that was actually a bad thing to do because you know for for four weeks no contact. You know when I got into that test, yeah, you know, I was I was falling around. Uh, I didn't do the right thing. You know it was it was unfortunate. Uh, I remember three of us got sacked, which was an, uh, Ian McDonald, Corbis uh, Vita. And myself, Uli, Uli uh, Schmidt, he was uh, the, the hooker at that time, and he was the only guy that was staying. <laughs> so, uh, three of us didn't do well in the line out. So, yeah, and uh, yeah, that was the end of it. Uh, and I thought that was the end of it. And then Max said, No, 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 you're going back, you're going with us to Australia. And 
uh, I played a, a few games there and uh, broke my hands and came back. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, why not hit the like button? And then after the French series, it was off to Australia for a three-test match tour with lots of midweek games as well. I remember the Springboks beating teams like Western Australia by large margins, like 80, 90, 100 points in some cases. Were those Australian local sides particularly weak? I wouldn't know if that was, uh, of the, or we were a, a better side or they were weaker. I, you know, you can't say. Because I, at that stage, I didn't know anything of, about those uh, people playing in that, those sides. Um, it, it was strange for us. Even, you know, going back, playing my, there in, in, in 84, you know, like uh, Beaumont and Billy Beaumont and those guys, you know, I, we didn't know about them. So we just played our game. I was still young and, and, and trying to do my thing. So the same with Australia, you, you play against guys that you don't even know. And um, yeah, it, uh, you, I, I can't say if, if we were a stronger side or they just were big, uh, uh, not that good at, at that stage. So you mentioned that your final game was against Victoria, but there's a little bit of a story behind that, isn't there? Yeah, that was the final match, you know. Um, <laughs> um, you know, the, the Australians, they've got this thing in there, they, they hold you back. So you can't get fast enough to the breakdown. And this this lock forward that played against me, the same thing, he held me back and I just gave him a backhand, you know, and uh, I broke my hand. So, um, yeah, and it was a very, very cold. I've never, never got that cold in my, you know, it was very cold that night. And I think because of the, you know, I actually gave him a backhand, first, first backhand, and I broke my hole, and, uh, and uh, yeah, so that, that, that was the whole reason. So, you know, I was irritated uh, with those guys, and, uh, yeah, and, you know, at that stage, you know, I've played in the, uh, you know, the B team, the Wednesday team. That was the game we played on the, you know, you want to, you want to do better because you want to play in the test game. And uh, so, unfortunate, it didn't happen, fortunately. Now, obviously, these days, with all the cameras, it's impossible to get away with that sort of thing. But I'm curious, in your day, how much of that stuff was going on? Look, uh, yeah, that uh, it happened in every game. You know, I, I can remember when we played provincial games, there's certain, of the, uh, certain teams that you played against, that you know, those guys are taking chances. And, you, and every three years, you get new guys uh, that's coming in. And, uh, you know, then you have to sort them out. Otherwise, they sort you out. And uh, I, I, I'm not going to say call any names or so, but I remember this youngster coming in, and I played for the Springbok side, and he played for the Barbarians at that time. And we played a game, and he and, and he, he swiped, a, you know, swipe a shot at me, and uh, he missed. And I thought, no, well, let let him show show me show him how it's been done. So I, I connected him very well. And afterwards, when we played against each other, he used to say, "Flash, we're all right now." <laughs> they say, "Don't worry, we're all right." Uh, so he knew, he knew. So you had to. Uh, that uh, that was the only uh, with a tackle uh, or a, a a good shot. On the nose that uh, showed you, so the, the next guy, listen, I must respect this guy. So uh, that's how it happened those years. Yeah. That's a great story. I'm interested to know, Rudy, do you have any regrets about not having had the opportunity to play professional rugby? No, oh, you know, th th this is, it will be easy to say now, you know, but the, um, what was nice of our time was that we played amateur. And if you made a mistake, then uh, that was okay. Now it's a job. And when you make mistakes in your job, you can lose your job. So for, for us, was, that was glorious days because that was nice. And you played for your, for your province and for your country. You know, it was something to play for. Nowadays, it's all about money. And, uh, and I don't think it's that nice. You know, we... we I re remember that, you know, after every game, we had uh, cocktail parties, 
and all that. And nowadays, I don't think they even got that. You know, they play a game and they go home. They, the, the job is done. And so, so uh, no, we had, we had good times. Uh, I think I, I think better. So I want to get it. I regret the money. Maybe we must talk about back pay or something like that. <laughs> okay, and then finally, tell us a little bit about that nickname, Flace. Uh, at that stage, I, I, we were the first guys that uh, uh, were doing our two-year defense in the defense force, and there was a lance corporal, um, and he called me. It's my Flace the one day, and uh, I said, well, I thought myself, you know, you're not going to complain about it. And then a commandant, and everybody heard that that name, and well. That's now history, so I'm going to my grave with that name as well. Rudy, it was great having you on Front Row Rugby. Thank you so much for your time, and I hope we can have you on again. You're welcome. Cool. Blessings to you. Well, guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video. And if you've just discovered Front Row Rugby, you can go and check out a two-part interview with Nas Boerter. The links are appearing on the screen right now. Hope you tune in next week when I'll have former Springbok flank Val Bartman as my guest. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed that video, please consider spear tackling the like button. You can also hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any content from Front Row Rugby. See you next time.